coffee. Coffee helps. Hi there, welcome to DevBrew. This, I, I forgot my lines for a second. This is where indie developers send their games and I do my best to give feedback on their game design. My name is Devon and today I'm drinking coffee. And today we're looking at a game called MPDC, Multiplayer Dungeon Crawler, that was developed by Bear Like Lion and submitted to us by Mark. Um, so I got to play this game with Mark and a few of his uh, playtesters. What it is is a collection of three different kinds of games. There's Survival, which is kind of like a tower defense kind of game. Monsters attack you in waves and you and your fellow people need to keep them at bay so that they don't get to the center of your map. If too many monsters get to the center, then you lose. Then there's Free For All, which is self-explanatory. Try to kill each other. That's basically it. And then there was dungeon, which was really interesting. It was the uh, it's the dungeon crawler part of this multiplayer game. You have randomly generated dungeons. In each dungeon, you're trying to find enemies to kill them, and that's basically it. So the footage that you're seeing is from an early development uh, stage of the game. Uh, I didn't see any version number of this game, but uh, it's the version that doesn't have a lot of stuff yet. Anyway, so there, there's more stuff to be done on this game and you can uh, check out the development of it on their page. If you watched DevBrew last week, then you probably already played this game. And if you haven't, there is a link in the description where you can play it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about this. Cold brew, cold brew, cold brew. More like tepid brew, cause it's not that cold right now. I'm gonna go game by game. I'm gonna start with this game, Survival. We're gonna take a look at each of the design aspects that kind of jumped out at me. So this is Survival. This is where, uh, this is kind of like the tower defense thing. Enemies attack in waves from all sides and you're trying to keep them from getting to the center. And if they hit the center too many times, then you lose. So right here is the center of the map. And if, you know, if any enemies get right there, then you lose. Uh, this whole game is in early development, so Mark is still adding a bunch of different things. One of the things he wants here is to have like a health bar here or some sort of item or something. And so when the enemies attack, then your health bar gets low and you can tell when when you lose, basically. It's kind of hard to talk about this game in like a really direct kind of way about what's wrong and what's right, because it is still very early in development, or at least it looks that way because the uh, the assets are still very basic. There's not a whole lot of detail in the game. There's a lot of juice that still needs to be put in there. So I might talk about some of those things, but you know, it's um, these are expected things. The way the game works is you can see that right here, this is me, I'm, I'm an archer. Uh, in fact, all of us are archers. You can change your class of person um, at any time. You have buttons one, two, and three that you can change between classes. So you have the archer, you have the warrior or the knight, and you have the wizard. Um, and the difference between them is actually not a ton of difference, but the archer has mid-range attacks, which he, he shoots arrows, which you can see here. The wizard has long-range attacks, fire and fireballs. Um, and then the warrior, or the knight, the knight has, uh, has a sword, uh, so it's very close-range attacks. The weird thing with those classes is that you would think that because the knight has like a shorter range attack, a very close one, that he needs to be really close to an enemy in order to, to hurt it, um, that it would be a really strong attack. But his attacks are actually kind of weak. Everyone has different damage that they deal, uh, and I think it's random, I'm not exactly sure. When I'm playing as any character, there's times where I hit enemies and I'll get like, I'll give nine damage and then 10 damage or, or 13 damage, but it's somewhere between nine and 13 is what it seems like. And then every now and then I get a critical hit, which would be a 22 or 28 or something like that. It seems like the wizard actually has the strongest attack. It seems like it. I only say that because his attack hits and usually I see like a damage of 13 come up. Whereas the warrior, it seems like it would have a, uh, has a smaller attack. Uh, usually I see nine whenever he hits something. So I don't know if I'm right in that. I, I could be wrong, but uh, I would think that if you're going to pick Warrior, I, I keep calling him Warrior, his name's Knight. He's a Knight. <laughs> I would think that if you're going to pick the Knight, uh, that you're risking uh, getting hurt because you're getting very close to the enemy. Because you're risking so much, I think your attack should be that much more powerful, right? There's And there's also a lot of different balance things that come into play here with the different classes. I found myself playing as the archer all the time, so I'm not really certain why you would want to choose one class over the other. You switch in between classes just whenever you want. <laughs> you just choose your class like you choose a weapon, basically. Um, and all of them have unlimited ammo, 
Uh, so you have unlimited uh, arrows, unlimited spells, unlimited sword slashes, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I don't really understand why I would want to choose one class over the other except for I want to change my, my attack style, I guess. I don't know. I would like to see something more interesting that's happening with these classes. Uh, something like where the wizard is like super fast or the, the and the, the knight's really slow and the knight has like a super strong attack or something like that. The, the reason why is because I, I want to see that trade-off. So that's the class system. Uh, let's talk about these right here. We have some text right here. Boom. Uh, and <laughs> if you didn't see that, well, I didn't I didn't either. When, when I first played this game, in fact, I didn't see it for a long time. It wasn't until Mark told me that these enemies are attacking in waves and he's saying, oh, here comes wave two and wave three. And I'm like, I don't even know <laughs> where he's getting this information. So immediately i want to see that text you know way bigger like like in a square like this or something like that or to let me know that information because it, again i didn't even i didn't even notice that information was even there um and then when the waves come in i think like most tower defense games you would want to you know put on the screen wave three you know something like that just to let us know exactly what's happening so that you can gear up for it and be like oh okay let me let me go to my edges or whatever the lives here is how many uh this is how many lives we have of this box basically so we want to make sure that doesn't get to zero because every time that an enemy touches it as you can see right here boop now our lives went down to eight but you can you can barely notice that right it's just a little digit that changed so i would like to see something that was like you know really big something that comes up and says I don't know, it just lets us know that something's happening. Uh, maybe like some sort of damage indicator, you know, like, I don't know, something like Halo th thing that go that happens where your whole screen goes, you know, crack or something like that. It doesn't have to be that specific kind of, you know, effect, but something, something very obvious to let all the players know, oh man, we're getting attacked. Something, you know, is doing that. So, you know, I, I would like to see some sort of on-screen effect, something to let us know that something's happening. Something else that I would like to see is when someone dies uh, in this instance in survival here. So what, what's interesting here about the waves and about the deaths is that when someone dies in here, they die until the next wave comes and then they respawn and you have your, your players back. We can see that right here, Virtu Virtuowski uh, had very little health because he was, he was AFK right here, so he got shot a lot. Um, but I didn't even notice when he died. And so when you have players that start dying, you know, you have limited resources now and you need to band together or, or try to replay in or something like that. So you can have, you know, someone tell you over the headset if they happen to be playing uh, with Discord or something and being like, hey, guys, I'm out of the game. But I would like to see something like, uh, you know, a, a visual indicator of some sort on the screen that says this person has died, you know, to something... I don't know, down here that says Virtuowski has died. Just something to, so so that people understand, you know, what's going on, that's all. So you can see, you know, we, we each have health bars, which I really like. Uh, the health bar is just very easy to see right underneath my name. And what's nice about that is that it floats, right? It floats along with me. So wherever I'm going, the health bar stays right there too. So you can see it all the time. Um, so what's nice about that is that I don't have to constantly you know, look off to the side or something like that. So say like if my if my health was like over here or something, or I don't know, over here, say I'm playing and I get hurt by a bad guy or something like that. So if, if it was up there in the corner, then I, I'd have to keep looking, right? I have to keep looking from the center to the up there. So I'm really happy that the, that the health is right there in the center. So I know exactly how much health I have, especially when set with such a fast paced game like this. Um, you would constantly need to know where your health is at so you, that you can plan accordingly. So the damage indicators uh, I like a lot. So they're, uh, they're numbers that come up that tell you exactly how much damage you've dealt. And so here's, here's one right here. It's just very obvious what's happening. You know, the numbers come up and I know exactly what's happening. I'm not sure what the numbers exactly have to do with the with the bars. I know that the numbers represent how much damage that you're, you know, dealing to the to the enemy here but i'm not sure why that number is important to me as the player unless i get like a critical hit why would i care that this attack does 11 versus that attack that does 10 you know i'm not i'm not exactly sure why especially when their health bar here is abstract like there's no number here that says like he has 30 and now he has 20 like 
that's not there, so I, I'm not sure why I would care how much how much exactly I'm dealing. Um, I do like kind of the idea of like random values between two amounts that I'm dealing because it, it kind of I don't know it makes a, an interesting interaction. I'm not I'm not really a huge fan of it because I think it's. I think it's more complex for no real reason, basically. For me, I think it would it would make more sense if just every uh, attack had like a, a set value that it does. I mean, unless what we're trying to do is like simulate like different kinds of shots, like if you got a headshot versus like a limb shot or something like that. If we're just trying to simulate that kind of thing, maybe, I don't know, it, it doesn't really work for me. Again, I'm not exactly sure why, why it matters. So I do like the damage indicator because, you know, the number coming up tells me I have done damage to the enemy, so that's great. But what I, but I think it could be a lot more simple where it could just be, you know, uh, I don't know, like he glows or something. I, I don't know, just, or he turns red or flashes red or something like that. Just to let me know that I've done, that I've dealt damage to him. I think it's nice that he has a health bar so I, I know how much damage I have left to go. Uh, Cause that <laughs> makes, that's actually really nice so that when you're strategizing your hits, I like the health bar and I like the damage indicator. I don't think the numbers mean much, but yeah, it's, it's nice to have them there. Another thing is the damage indicator for the player. I do like that a lot too because it's a different color. This is also something interesting. Uh, when you have a critical hit on someone, boom, it turns red and the numbers are huge. <laughs> so it lets you know that something big has happened, right? And uh, I, always, I always notice that whenever I was playing, it was very obvious. So I like that, kudos to that, that's nice. So if you're like an early game developer and you're trying to put in different kinds of damage indicators and, and stuff like that, this right here is a very busy, a very busy screen right here with a lot of characters in here, a lot of movements. So how do you let the player know that they got damaged versus the enemy getting damaged? Well, in this case, the damage indicator is yellow. So you can see that all right here, they're all turning white, white, and then yellow right there. And that was me getting getting hurt. So it's, it's a really simple idea. You just change the color of the indicator that came up and it, it means something different. So that's nice. Also, this is a very subtle thing, but really good. I really like this. The player's name that you are is green versus everybody else that's white. Could you imagine <laughs> the confusion if my name was white, uh, I mean, obviously they say different things, but uh, what if two players were named the same thing? It's really nice that I look different to me or versus, you know, someone else looks different to them. So I really like that. I, that's a, that's a very good thing. So because this game is still in development, right, there's still a lot of things being added. One of the things that I know was gonna go in, but we're gonna talk about it anyway, is the sound effects. Sound effects are just kind of all over the place. So the attacks, I think, all make sounds. The bow makes a very, very low sound, whereas the wizard makes a very, very loud sound. And then the, the sound effect for getting hurt is just kind of a it's just kind of that. I would like to see more juicing in this game. This game needs a lot more juice. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar with what juice is, it's 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 amplifying the feedback of everything. So when a player gets hurt, you know you want a flash and a sound effect, something that's very obvious. There's a there's a video on juicing. I'll, I'll link it in the description. There's a video that's a great video on uh, giving your game juice. It makes the interaction, the the player interacting with the game feel a lot better. It, the, the game feel is what you can call it also. That's another thing. Uh, game feel. So this game would benefit a whole lot from juicing from like the sound effects to visual effects, just a whole bunch of things that would that would amp up the feel of the game. So that's all I got to say about survival. Let's talk about free for all. Okay, so free for all is exactly what you'd expect, right? You uh, play as your character and it's the same same kinds of characters they have before except now you're trying to kill each other versus you know instead of trying to kill enemies um, and it's it's a lot of fun I can I can tell you that but the the interaction between all of these classes that you have going up against each other in like a multiplayer kind of thing like this or a deathmatch kind of thing it changes the way that these classes are looked at it changes the way that the dynamic works in the game that the interaction works in survival right we all banded together to try to get enemies in this one we're all going against each other so it's a lot more focused on the individual when you start this game when you start this multiplayer deathmatch 
you don't choose a character. Everyone is the same character, right? You can choose between three different classes, but everyone can choose in between three different classes whenever they want and just switch. So everyone is essentially the same character with the same moves. What that does is it creates kind of a stale gameplay because the only thing, the only thing creating a different dynamic between you and someone else is your skill level. That can be interesting, you know, in a game like Pong, for example, that's the only separator, right? Or in like high level Smash Brothers where everybody is Fox. It can be interesting to see the kind of skills that the player has has acquired. In order to make something more interesting for a mass appeal for a lot of people, you want to create more interesting dynamic situations. The way to create those situations is to have some sort of gameplay modifier. In here, the gameplay modifiers that exist are power-ups. And there's three different kinds of power-ups. There's, uh, I think there's only three. There's health, where you get health, where it just fills up your health bar. Speed boost, where you become faster. And rapid fire, where you shoot uh, faster than other people. And so those are the only things, but they only exist on timers. So they create some sort of dynamic, uh, but not a whole lot. So as soon as somebody gets this power-up, then they might dominate for a little bit, but then everything goes back to normal right? And we're just waiting for that next power up to create another interesting situation. But most of the time, whenever someone has that power up, everyone runs away from that person because you're, you're instantly more powerful than everyone else. It, it creates kind of a, a one note situation. What I would suggest is to introduce more modifiers to the situation. Now that could be in multiple power ups where we have, uh, you know, one for, for each player pop up at random or something. Maybe permanent classes, right? Where you can only choose one class over the other. Maybe drawbacks to modifiers. W one of the things to this, to this modifier thing, the modifiers in other games are things like weapons, okay? If we think about first-person shooters and multiplayer first-person shooters, like Halo, for example, you have quite a bit of different guns, but they each do different things for the player. So you have your pistol, right, which is very weak, and then you have your uh, machine gun, which shoots faster than the pistol, but it's a little less accurate. You have a sniper, which can sh can kill the player in one, one shot, because it's very, very powerful, but it takes a very long time to reload. Then there's the rocket launcher, which of course uh, is super powerful, but it comes with very limited ammo, right? So all of these drawbacks to the weapons are to provide balance for the game. So you have these modifiers that shift the dynamic, you know, crazy. So like I have a machine gun, but then someone else gets a rocket launcher. I can still shoot pretty fast, but the guy with the rocket launcher can't shoot that fast. Although he's more powerful than I am, so I gotta be careful, but he's gotta be careful because I can shoot fast. This dynamic is switched, but it's also still balanced, right? The players are still on an even kill, but the dynamic has changed completely. So that's what I want to see with something like this is with those modifiers. It doesn't just have to be power-ups. Uh, you can do it with classes. You can do it with anything, really. I mean, as long as you tweak the dynamic to make it more interesting between the players, but then keep everything balanced by tweaking one over the other. I think it would be really cool to have something like uh, someone can be a knight who's really, really powerful, right? Have like a super powerful attack, but he's really slow, you know, uh, or someone like uh, the archer who you could you can make him like really, really fast but his attacks aren't that powerful. Like that kind of change or that kind of dynamic would make for really interesting gameplay for someone to keep coming back and trying something different over and over. I would also like to see some different kinds of levels. Like this one level that we played was really great for this kind of interaction. As you can see, these little pillars right here me and the other players would always use these pillars to try to hide behind and then shoot and then go behind again. It just it just goes to show you that you can use almost anything to create that kind of really interesting dynamic. To have different levels would also create those different situations. One of the things in here that I didn't really get is when I killed somebody else and it's because we don't have any death animation. They just kind of pop out of existence and so when it's like really really fast paced um, you, you don't really notice when someone dies, except for when uh, the text pops up to let you know. Where this is highlighted the most is when you kill somebody off screen. Uh, so like right here, you can see me shoot an arrow, boom, I killed somebody. It says, you erased twitchy whales. A death animation I think would, would help with that where it, when someone just stops in their tracks and they die or something like that, uh, it would just be nice to, to see that so you can understand that I killed them. So I think that's about all I have to say about free for all. Now let's talk about dungeon. In the dungeon mode, uh, the idea of the game is to kill a bunch of enemies in a randomly generated dungeon. So right here you can see all of us spinning our, spinning our bows around. So the idea here is that we have an amount of enemies and then we have to go and find those enemies and kill them. And then it times us on how, how long it takes us. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So you can see here we're, we're all 
trying to kill all these enemies, and then you just keep going forward and keep trying to kill other enemies. So that's basically it. When you're designing a game or when you're trying to give design feedback like I am right here, you have to ask yourself why things are happening, right? Why do I have this? Why do I have that? For example, why do we have a randomly generated dungeon? In this case, I don't really think randomly generated dungeons does anything for the experience, except for making it feel like you're in a different place, I guess. The whole goal of this situation here is to play with your friends and try to find all these enemies and kill them. But there's nothing really working against you. I mean, you're not really trying to find them before time runs out. So in fact, the counter, I think, yeah, the counter just counts up your time. So it's like, what is the challenge exactly? What, why are we trying to find the enemies? If this was a different thing, like try to find and kill all the enemies before the timer gets to a certain point, uh, then that would be a challenge. I think that would be personally an annoying challenge because uh, trying to find something in a randomly generated dungeon would be kind of uh, difficult to say the least. Trying to find these enemies doesn't really present any kind of challenge. So. I think something that would be more interesting here, something to, to make more of the, the challenge of trying not to die, would be to still keep you know the amount of enemies the same because there was a good amount of enemies here to, to kill people. I think the goal could be changed to try to pick up objects, right? So if you had like a certain number of objects that you had to get within this place, then the randomly generated dungeon would make sense at that point because then you have some rooms that have objects and some rooms that don't and most rooms that just have enemies. So when you're going throughout these rooms trying to find these objects because you don't know where they are, then you have enemies that are coming out and uh, challenging you basically, right? You have to stay alive while trying to get these objects. So I think that would create you know, an interesting kind of dynamic between you and the game. Something that I think worked in here was the bosses because like at the end of our gameplay, we would always have a boss uh, that we'd have to beat and it was really cool when you have that kind of dynamic between the players because like right here we only had two people left me and and twitchy whales uh and we had all these enemies come up and this boss comes up and i'm just trying to lead him away uh in circles and twitchy is trying to help me uh dispatch him so that kind of dynamic was really interesting i like playing with people that way the only reason why that happened is because we had to beat the boss at that time and it felt like something different was happening that was the the last enemy there so if we had like say an object collection thing then you could still keep the boss but the, maybe the boss drops the last object or something like that um you know just to create to create a challenge for the player because right now it doesn't really feel like a challenge it just kind of feels like a thing that we're doing i think in here we could create more interesting situations if at the very beginning we each had to choose you know a class before heading out because then it would create a very specific uh dynamic that's happening so like some players are only the knights and some players are only wizards that way you guys have to work together in fact it would be really interesting to have someone who could be like a healer you know who has like a very mild attack but also can heal other other people i think that'd be really cool i would like to see a challenge that's presented to these players a barrier that they have to get over in order to get to somewhere right uh so maybe in here maybe there's an you could do something like an exit block or something like that where the the point of the game is to um get to the exit you know then try to stay alive try to get as many people out as possible um or to try to collect as much treasure as possible before everyone dies or to collect a certain amount of things like uh, gems or diamonds or whatever something that would create a goal for these players and then something that stands in their way to get to that goal that would be interesting uh so yeah so i think that's about it i think that's all i have for uh mpdc thank you so much mark for submitting this game thanks for uh letting me to play with your your play testers and i had a lot of fun playing uh, multiplayer with you guys and this was really interesting so i really hope to see uh different things come out of this i can see something happening here and i and i i really like it you know i like that something is emerging the game did get stale every now and then but there was still some general interest that was being held up so i think if you uh keep on this trajectory of of uh you know adding more challenge or adding more pieces to the game juicing it up i think you'll have something really good here and i think a lot of players will be interested in playing this kind of thing if you guys want to play uh the game next week we're talking about curse of zix uh that link is in the description um i haven't even checked the link yet so i hope <laughs> hope it's playable um but it should be so 
go ahead and click on that link, you know, play that game, and then you'll be ready for next week's analysis. And then you'll go in and be like, hey, wait a second, he's wrong about this. You can then critique my critique. So yeah, <laughs> if you learned something from this, you know, give this a like, give it a share, do all that YouTube stuff. Um, and I'm gonna go and finish my coffee. Actually, I shouldn't, because I'm going to bed soon. <laughs>